Hey guys, this is Neo. We have something special for you today. During BlizzCon, we had the pleasure to talk to K.O. Milker and Keith Sizemore, production director and senior animator of Warcraft 3 Reforged. We talked with them about the campaign, the multiplayer, uh, possible DLC content, esports, the challenges of doing Warcraft 3 Reforged. And now, without further ado, here's the interview. 20 minutes. Have fun. When did you decide to reforge Warcraft 3? I think it was uh, clear when we realized there was a full community still continuing to keep its game alive. And in reality, we had BNet continuing to move forward while Warcraft 3 was still on the old BNet. And so we reached out to the community and said, hey, what would you guys like to see? And a lot of people said, get us on the more modern BNet as well as, you know, what would be nice to have and it would be good visuals and upgrades and everything like that. So we reached out to the community and then acted on it. It was a really cool opportunity as well, though, for us to kind of bridge the distance between when Warcraft 3 came out in 2002 and WoW coming out, you know, a few years later. That whole WoW audience, some of them had never experienced some of the stories and characters from Warcraft 3 that kind of set the foundation for World of Warcraft. So there's a really cool opportunity, too, to kind of reflect on where Warcraft has come from and where it is now and be able to kind of tie those two things together. It's something really cool that we did in, in and reforging Warcraft 3 was to go back to some of the missions that went to familiar places from World of Warcraft, but because it predated World of Warcraft, they didn't actually look like what, what WoW eventually looked like. So we've gone back now and updated the visuals so that it actually looks and feels like more, like more WoW players will expect today, while remaining, like while kind of preserving the gameplay and things that people who had originally played Warcraft they really remember. So it's kind of cool just to bring that stuff together. So modern technology, modern visuals with this classic gameplay from Warcraft 3, and hopefully bridging that distance between Warcraft 3 players who are there today still playing the game, very passionate community, and players who might have played it 15 years ago, maybe never played it. So we bring all of them together now. It seems like the development is a little bit behind the schedule. Will the game still come out in 2019? And so there's, um, this is a big game. There's a lot going on in it. We're replacing basically every piece of art that exists in Warcraft 3. In addition to replacing what we had, we're adding a whole bunch of new art. I'll kind of let Keith talk about some of that stuff. Of how, like the, the amount of stuff that we're adding is just immense. Oh yeah. So originally in the old game there was one paladin. It was Uther. Now we have our eight paladins. Are all the different variations? They all require different animations. We also have. We're also supporting the uh, original mod, uh, Blizzard fund or Blizzard supported mods, which was the carts. So we have carts for the characters. We have the towers for the characters. But not only that, we have the campaign that we have to go through, and it has all of these legendary characters that you're familiar with and wow. We had to make sure that we also gave them a reforge in Warcraft 3. So all in all, there's around 2,200 assets in the game that require reforging and they require animation. So there's a lot of work for us to do. Yeah, and, and the beta is really the final steps of this in terms of bringing that all together and then starting to test it. Because not only are we testing all these assets, because it's not just the visuals of them, we're also testing the gameplay. We want to make sure, again, that we preserve the way Warcraft 3 feels. Mm -hmm. So players who are right now playing Warcraft 3, when they come in and switch to reforge, we want to make sure that experience is still really true to the original. So the beta is really where we feel that out right now. So we just started that in the last week. Orcs and humans are playable right now in melee mode. So 1v1 and 2v2 players can come in right now. We announced yesterday that um, virtual ticket holders from BlizzCon are going to get added to the beta next week. So they'll be able to come test. Uh, up next, the undead will be added to the beta. And then, of course, the night elves will follow that. So we'll be testing out all the Battle.net functionality because this is all bringing the entire game onto our modern technical stack for Battle.net. We'll feel all that stuff out, but kind of phase by phase, we'll feel out where we are in the beta, and that will ultimately dictate when the game's going to release. But um, you know, we want this game to be fantastic and be really high quality, and so all of our focus is on making sure that as we bring together these thousands of assets and all the new technology, that what we end up with is something that we're all really excited about to be Warcraft 3 reforged. Yeah, and then the offset layering on the beta, releasing the different races as we go, allows us to react to feedback per race, and it gives us time to readdress animations and visuals and silhouetting and everything to make sure it's in line with the original one and what we're doing in Reforged. So you are flexibly uh, working with the feedback and the results you see? Yes. Yeah, there's some examples of that already. Like Even before we released the beta, the community got a hold of a version of it that was a really <laughs> early test version that we put out. Yeah. And one of the things they jumped on right away was feedback on the Blade Master on yep. the Orc race and about the way his, uh, his sword was positioned when he ran and that it didn't look right, it didn't read correctly for them. So I know that's one of the first things that like Keith and the art team went back to and we're kind of making sure we adjust that and get that kind of thing right. So those are the things we're looking for. It's look, it's feel, it's the combination of those things and how they all kind of add up to what the game is. Okay. Will we see any changes to the Warcraft 3 campaign mode? 
Yeah, uh, like uh, uh, Kao was mentioning where we were kind of seeming together the WoW uh, aesthetics of what has been developed and what has been in Warcraft 3. We're bringing together Dalaran. We're making sure that it looks like Dalaran and WoW. We're also making sure that uh, Stratham looks like Stratham as well as uh, Silvermoon. Um, so there are aesthetics and buildings that we actually are adding to the game to kind of bring the WoW community's familiarity to Warcraft 3, but also give a new life to what is Warcraft 3 in the campaign. Uh, we're doing uh, new uh, cutscene camera angles and stuff like that. So we have the tools to have slow ins and slow outs now instead of the linear motions, but we're kind of maintaining close to what the original one was so people get that same aesthetic feel that they had when they originally played it, but with new nice visuals and particle effects. And we also have uh, cinematic animations now where characters will walk instead of run, they'll have gestures, they'll actually point their weapons and stuff like that instead of like. Arthas constantly using his spell to like announce everything that he does, lifting his <laughs> hammer up. Now he actually gestures to Uther and stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, fleshing out what was in Warcraft 3 to what we have now in the campaign. Yeah, as we did that, though, we really we did the the dialogue, the story, everything. We we made sure we kept that intact because yes. that's the part that I think is so iconic and and such such a kind of this foundational thing to to Warcraft lore that we wanted to hang on to and, and make sure people could experience it again with just new visuals and, and just new aesthetic and new technology while maintaining like, the core of what, what what you expect from Warcraft 3. And that's the thing, uh, the voiceover, we're, we're leaving it as it is. We did listen to feedback last year on the Bliss, kind of we did have to see, hear people's response to how Arthas was differently voiced from WoW and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So we said, you know what, let's not change that. Let's not sever that connection that people have from the original voices in the game so that when they are listening to Arthas, it's the original Arthas that they know they love and all that stuff. Yeah, what, and one thing that was new for it too that is that um, the game was, wasn't originally localized in as many languages as we localize Blizzard games in today. So there's actually a bunch of new locales being added in yeah. um, for the first time. So that would be something that players in different in different regions will might be able to experience it in their native language in a way they never have before. But at the same time, they can always go back to the, the original. Uh, you could think, say in the English VO if that was the way they experienced it originally as well. Yeah. And there's also going to be uh, new music as well added to the game to add to the experience as well as there's uh, the audio team is doing an amazing job at layering in nice details to the atmosphere of the cities and the towns so people can experience more of a live filling game than what they did in Warcraft 3 originally. Currently, there's a lot of negative feedback on the colors and the silhouettes of units. Are you aware of that and how will you address it? We definitely have. Uh, we have people working on making sure the team color pops as it originally did so you get reads on the characters. We're also like the Blade Master when we're talking about silhouetting. We're adjusting silhouetting for the heroes. You know, the Mountain King felt a little small in the beta, so we actually scaled him up maybe a little too much. So now he's a giant dwarf, at least on our side of things. So we're going to scale him a little bit back down just so he feels a little more natural. Um, so we're addressing all the feedback that we're seeing in the forums. We're addressing uh, silhouetting for hero characters first, and then we're going to kind of trickle down to more of the more used characters like the grunts and stuff. I follow up with that but, um, because I don't think people are only saying uh, about the colors uh, on the units, but also yeah. like the terrain, yeah, terrain. and the general uh, yeah. color palette. Yeah, we is that also something you're looking at? It is. Yes. It's definitely something we continue to look at, iterate on. We look at that tile set by tile set. Each one has its own light. So there's a lot of things that we're adjusting there as we go. But it's also they're giving feedback on the combination between like what the color saturation is on the train versus the units and how they pop and so that's stuff that we're, that we're absolutely looking at right now we're trying to get the right balance there to make sure it meets everybody's expectations. Do you have any details about the multiplayer of Walker 3 Reforged? I can't personally speak for it. Yeah, I don't have too much about it. Maybe something yeah. that we can get, make sure that someone from the design team gets you guys specific okay. answers on the, the details of that. I will say though that we're going to be going live um, when the game launches. We'll, it'll be in a similar state to what we did with StarCraft Remasters, where, where the original or the, where the latter won't be live at first because we have to test out this new MMR system. Yeah. Uh, something that we did for Reforged is that you now have a per um, race MMR, where originally in Warcraft Three you, you had one profile MMR and you go in and play and and we, like. Yeah, if you were amazing at Orc and you weren't very good at the other races, but you ended up playing other races, you'd get matched as if you were great at them. Yeah. Um, and now, so that's going to be per race when you go and play. You won't have to make separate profiles for each race or anything like that. So there's a lot of things that we want to test out and get right. And then once that's good, uh, shortly after launch, we'll be bringing ladders back online again. But more details on that. If you have specific questions, maybe you can send it, and we'll make sure we get you answers from the right people. And actually, later today, there will be a panel where we'll have uh, senior designers, uh, Michael Scipioni, as well as Pete Silva on that, where they'll be able to talk more. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Are there any plans of Blizzard getting involved into Walker 3 esports? 
Yeah, so we don't have anything to announce now, but I think there's a lot of interest in, in Reforged. And I mean, Warcraft 3 has had a lot of interest still. It's been something that when you think about how long ago this game came out, there's still a pretty big esports scene for it, from it globally. But um, yeah, I think we can expect to see some things coming out of that, but we'll have to wait a little bit longer and see what all the details are on. What part of the development of Warcraft 3 Reforged was the most tedious? Making sure we didn't break the original, basically. We wanted to make sure because we're building it on the original game and uh, we're taking, and we know that there's a community that currently supports it, we didn't want to release a title that we felt that just disconnected and severed that original connection in the game. We wanted to make sure that people, when they played it, they said, this feels like the original Warcraft. And so we're definitely listening to the feedback that we're getting on the beta right now, and we're, we're acting on that to make sure that we still are going down that nice path of balance, but also while maintaining the, the current community that supports it and has loved it for 16 plus years. Um, so on, on my end, when it came to animation, we had to make sure that the attacks were the same lengths as the originals and that the damage points were the same as the originals so that somebody playing on Est, because one of the things that we did want to set out on was to have the original play against Reforged so that you could play it and it could be balanced. So we made sure that when this Gretton original was attacking, the Gretton Reforged was also hitting at the same exact point. Okay. Yeah, to, and to that end, there's something interesting with the game where we're trying to balance that need of we want to bring new things into the game and kind of give it this kind of like fresh coat of paint really so that people yeah. can come and experience it anew. But at the same time, there are millions of players who love Warcraft 3 as it is. We wanted to make sure we preserve that. So Warcraft 3 as exists today does not go away, right? It's, it's going to live in parallel with Reforge. Players will be able to choose what they want to play. They can actually go in and from an option. If you own Reforge, you could say, hey, I want to actually go and experience this in like the original standard definition again, switch back to it and play it. So it's this thing of kind of pushing ourselves to make sure we're, we're leveling it up and making it look great and, and, and making it appealing to players who maybe are, haven't played it in a while or have never played it. But at the same time, we, we hope that the people who are passionate about the game right now can come over, but they also will still have the original there as well. So that balance is something that's been difficult to strike. That's something that we're really passionate about. And during the beta, we will be testing standard like definition, original War 3, and, and uh, Reforged War 3 with each other too. So we'll, we'll be filling that out as part of the beta. Yeah. After the release, what is the future support and development going to look like? Well, there's going to be patch balance patches that will follow after the release that uh, I know Michael Scipioni will be able to talk about later today in the panel. Um, beyond that, um, I'm not too sure on that. I know there's going to be balance and map rollouts. And yeah. Well, definitely the first big thing will be that the multiplayer patch that really kind of brings the ladders online and, and is that reactive thing to how did everything with our MMR changes shape out and now we can kind of bring competitive like fully online. So that will be the initial thing. But um, like Keith said, we definitely plan balance patches. We want to add more content to the game as well. You know, there are systems that we've added to the game that allow us to like make a ton of cool art for it and we actually have the ability to do that so we would like to be bringing in more content as we go not necessarily like campaigns or anything like that but just you think about the custom map scene and mm -hmm. how much like we're already giving that like like he said thousands of new assets to the game that our map makers will be able to use we have a really cool opportunity to keep bringing in interesting things to, to feed that community we're really excited to see what comes out of all that yeah. is dlc a possibility uh, I don't know if I would call it DLC. I think we have mechanisms in the game to just be able to support now, like he said, you know, each individual hero can have their own unique models with them now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of shipping with the game, you know? Yeah. So when you, when you originally would, you know, spawn uh, a Farseer, there might, you might get randomized one of some number of names, and now you actually get a unique model for that as well. But there's a lot of opportunities for us to keep bringing in cool art like that, so. And that's the thing, the original Paladin was just Uther, and, and people are familiar with that, and we're still supplying Uther. But on top of that, we have seven other Paladins that people can roll into, say, I like this specific Paladin, I can play as him. If people don't like the, the default hero Paladin that we currently have, they can definitely choose the alternates. And so there's that skin system that has flexibility for heroes versus melee characters. What challenges did you go through recreating the culling? The culling? Like challenges recreating the culling? Oh, uh, that was pretty challenging. <laughs> but um, uh, we definitely um, enjoyed it, for sure. Uh, one thing we did find was when we, when we hit BlizzCon with that and we listened to the feedback on that, just the same as the voiceovers, we felt like we were steering too far away from what was originally familiar to the audience. So like a lot of the, the cutscenes, were, were further from what was recognized in terms of gameplay camera. And so we we pulled back and we said, you know what, let's go back to what was originally there so people when they experience these campaigns, they can experience it on a recognizable level. And so uh, with the cooling on BlizzCon, um, that was more of an ex uh, a test case to see what people thought. thought. And we, we returned and we said, hey, let's, 
let's pull back, we went a little too far, and let's just keep it to the original one as much as we can, but let's put new tools in to make the cameras flow better, to make the cutscenes feel better, let's add animations to fill out the scenes, to flush it out, and make it feel a, little bit, a little bit more alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you be expanding on the features of the Walker through Forged Observer Mode? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't fully know the answer to it. I know we talked about doing some things. I can't confirm what they are here, though, so that might be something that would be good for me to get a confirmation for you um, from, from Skip or Matt or one of our designers on yeah. the project. Right. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Why did you reforge Warcraft 3 and not Warcraft 1 or 2? I think Warcraft 3 was that pivotal moment where it shifted into what is known as World of Warcraft. And so there was a lot of legendary moments in the story that happened that... Everybody is familiar with Sylvanas, right? Yeah. So she's turned into something completely epic in World of Warcraft. But in War Warcraft 3, it was kind of an afterthought in terms of her character. Uh, they didn't know what she was going to become originally. Um, and so we wanted to revisit that and see that kind of the two worlds together and make, give these legendary characters and their turning points in the story uh, a re reforging, essentially. Um, and Warcraft 3 still has that bustling community behind it in the modding community, so there's a lot of support for a reason why we brought that back. How will custom games be implemented and supported in Walker 3 or Forged? Yep, yeah, actually, so one of the phases of the beta, we will bring the editor online first to give some more time for um, map makers to start like getting their, their maps reforged ready. Uh, and then there will be custom games in the beta as well for us to start testing that out at scale. So there's, you know, right now already we've done some updates to the live version of Warcraft 3 with the 1.31 patch. It brought some of the editor functionality in that's kind of preparing us for Reforge. But the, that beta phase will be really key to doing that. And I think because there are like literally like millions and millions of maps that people have created, it, um, the map makers who own those maps in many cases have locked them and they will need to come back and do things like go in and be able to select this map now supports HD or it supports HD and SD or it's SD only. So some of that work has to happen of just they need to come kind of come back and republish their maps if it's something that's been locked down like that. But um, it will definitely take some time too for us and the map makers to bring all that stuff together. It's going to be a little bit of back and forth there as we get that going. But we're super excited to do it. We've been doing a lot of testing internally with, um, you know, we've looked at some of the most popular maps that are still live and active right now in the community and been testing them internally. Um, but again, the, the beta is going to be really where we feel all that out and see where it all lands. But we're super excited to see what, what happens with that because, again, thousands of new assets. So much of what was going on in Warcraft 3, what we did and what the community had to do was scale and tint things and it was like that was all you did. So any variations you wanted and now you've got just tons and tons of unique variations of, of countless models in the game. So. Yeah, for example, if, if the original um, community <coughs> excuse me, uh, built their maps with Warcraft, the original Warcraft 3 um, and they put like a null, for example, a null brute, a null assassin, a null archer, they, uh, they saw one character scaled and tinted throughout. And if they were to load their map now, they'll actually see different variations of the nulls with unique models. So when they open their maps, they'll actually get a new revisioning of their map. If you would have to choose a Walker 3 or 4 hero, who would it be and why? Mine, uh, my hero would be definitely Arthas, because I've worked with him the most. So, and that goes for Death Knight Arthas, that goes for regular Arthas, because his turning point and everything. Um, what about you? Uh, yeah, I I think probably the Farseer. I I like mounted. <laughs> I just like being uh, yeah. So, but I don't know. There's so many cool ones, and I think again with now the new art on it, it's been really neat because I think there's this neat combination between now of like discovering um, the visuals and com combining that with so, like something that we just never had before in the game. So they did a really great job on all the unique models. Probably one of my favorite is uh, there's one <laughs> one of. Uh, what is our, what's the kind of our chubby year? Um, oh, uh, I don't think it's, is it Death, Death Rock? Death or, Rock, yeah. Yeah, so we did the Dreadlords and we all made original Dreadlords and I think you guys have seen them, the, the more bulkier, mm -hmm. massive one. Uh, we actually put background stories to a lot of the heroes, so like the, there's a thinner uh, Dreadlord and we're kind of making them out to be companions <laughs> in a way. Yeah, but yeah, Death the Rock is probably my spirit <laughs> animal though. So <laughs> With the mind. tiny wings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He looks awesome. You guys check him out. Yeah. At what point will all pre-purchases have access to the beta? What was it? At what point? At what point? Yeah, I mean, it should be 
coming in the next week or two. I think we're going to try to roll in all pre-purchasers first. That's what we've been doing is inviting the pre-purchasers. So bringing in the BlizzCon people will kind of be at the tail end of the pre-purchasers. We definitely want to make sure they're in there first. So And also, moving forward, if you pre-purchase the game in real time, you'll get the beta license, so you'll be able to play right away as well. So we're super excited about that. We want people who are excited about this game to be able to get in and help us test it and help us make sure it's ready. And we're definitely listening to the feedback. So the more people that get in, the more feedback we can get, and we can start acting on it. What's the best way to leave feedback? Uh, I, I scour Reddit all the time. I scour the Blizzard forums. I watched YouTube channels. Yeah, the, the beta has a form that's actually specific to to um, just to people who have access to the beta, so it's not open for everyone to, to comment on. But So once you have access to the beta, go to the beta forum. You'll get a link in your email that invites you. Uh, go jump in there. Then that's probably like the official way to do it. But again, yeah, we look everywhere too. So in our other forums, Reddit, <laughs> We kind of hear the collective voice of, uh, of the internet on these things, but, but focus feedback and bug reporting will happen on the forum. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, much. you guys. Yeah, and it's like specific stuff that we weren't able to answer. Please, like, let's get that routed. And I want to make sure you guys get answers on that. I know it's hard because it's video, or I don't know if they're both video, but, um, but yeah, let's Sorry. be able to answer that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just in the LA and LA. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, a big thanks to K.O. Milker and Keith Scythemore for taking the time to talk to us and answer some questions that we had about Warcraft 3 Reforged. If you like what we do here on our channel, please subscribe, ring the bell, and if you feel very generous, we have a donation link in the description, we have merchandise in the description, and the Amazon referral link as well. So if you want uh, to help out back to Warcraft a little bit, here's your chance, and we will see you later with more Warcraft 3 Reforged content.